All right, guys, I'm down to the last piston, and uh, I wanted to show you guys, or at least to explain what I have going on here, uh, in case you've never assembled an engine before, uh, you know, to give you give you an idea of what's going on. So you can see that I got the engine um, at an angle, right? So the deck surface that I'm working on right now is actually facing up. And uh, most engine stands, every, every engine stand I've ever worked on, you're able to turn it to different positions and lock it in. So uh, basically what you want to do is rotate the crankshaft until the uh, bearing journal is in the middle of the cylinder. And you've got your deck surface pretty level up here at the top. It's not it's not dead level, but it's close enough. And um, that way when you bring the piston into the cylinder, you're going to have an easier time of guiding the rod down and getting it. Uh, on the rod journal, you know, properly. So uh, that's one thing that'll make things a lot easier. And uh, so basically, as I assembled this engine, I already had all the rings and the bearings placed into the to the rods and the pistons, obviously. And uh, I started on the odd side on GM. You know, that's the driver side. And you know, so you go one, three, five, seven. And so basically, I just kept that side up. And every time that I wanted to put a new piston in, I would just rotate the, the crankshaft and, uh, you know, center up the, the bearing journal and go ahead and tap that piston in and, and put the cap on. It's not torqued. None of them are torqued yet. But, um, but anyway, so it's, it's in and the cap is screwed on. I just, I just put it on with my uh, cordless ratchet. So that'll give you an idea of, of the assembly process. Um, so... On the pistons themselves, um, you got your ring orientation, and basically what you want to do, uh, first of all, the mark on the piston signifies facing forward towards the front of the engine. So every single piston, this marks the face forward, and uh, you know, so that that helps you a little bit right there. You don't have to worry as much about your rod orientation um, as long as as long as every piston goes back in where it came out. And you can see these are all numbered. They've got the number stamped in the top of two, four, six, eight. I'm on the uh, even side right now. So uh, what you're going to want to do is basically the side of the piston that faces up. You're going to put your compression ring, which is the top ring, uh, facing up, and then you're going to put your scraper ring, which is the second ring, facing down. And generally, what I do is I'll put the oil rings facing to the right side of the piston. So you'll have you got your your oil ring spacer, and then you've got your two oil rings. And um, what I like to do is basically I put the, the gap of the oil ring spacer, and then I put one oil ring, like say the bottom of the oil ring to one side, and I'll put the top oil ring to the other side. And then I center that up on the right side of the piston. And then like I said, I put the compression ring, gap straight up, the scraper ring, gap straight down, and then you're ready to install the piston. The next thing you want to do is to lubricate the piston and uh, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and spray it down uh, with some lubricant. It doesn't have to be uh, oil, you know, it could be oil. Um, I just prefer to use a, a penetrating lubricant myself. Um, it's just easy and, and that's really all you need. As soon as you fire this thing up, oil is going to splash all over everything anyway. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Once you've got the lubricant on the rings, I like to kind of spin them around just a little bit, make sure that you know the, the lubricant is in the rings. And then like I said, at that point, you want to check your orientation. So I put the oil ring to the right, scraper ring gap down, compression ring gap up. And once you've gotten to that point, then you can go ahead and get your compression sleeve or whatever type of tool you're using the compression rings into the cylinder. So get this thing kind of starting to be snowed. Make sure that all your sleeves are even, you know, so it's all flat. And then you're going to tighten this thing down tight. Like pretty much as many clicks as you can get out of it. 
and uh, that'll give you a better chance of getting the piston in the cylinder. So the next thing we're going to do is actually spray a little bit of lubricant in the cylinder. And you don't need a whole lot, but you just want a little, you know, you just need something in there, you know, just to, just to keep things slippery, basically is what we're looking for. Um, so the, you also want to leave the skirt exposed when you install your compression ring. Uh, I wanted to mention that. So go ahead and orientate your piston to the front of the engine. Drop it in. Get the piston lined up. And uh, like I said, point that, point that mark, you know, towards where it's going to go. Give your tools up in the taps to make sure it's seated fully. And then you're gonna you're gonna knock this piston down into the cylinder, and you want to hold the ring down. And you want to give it a, a couple of firm hits. Um, once you get a good feel for it, a lot of times you can just do it in one hit. Um, but it might take a couple. But what you want to do is make sure that you keep downward pressure on this tool and make sure that it's seated fully. And uh, you know, if your piston gets stuck, just stop, reset, and and try it again because you don't want to you don't want to try to force the piston down in there. Your, one of your rings is likely caught on the top of the cylinder. So let's see if I can do this on camera. So there you go. And um, so once the once the piston is in the cylinder, you're gonna reach down underneath and you're gonna guide the rod onto the bearing drum. Make sure nothing binds up, make sure it's straight, and it should slide right on there. So everything's good there. And uh, of course you wanna make sure that you put your assembly lubricant in the bearing. So um, next, we'll take the bearing cap, and again, you want to make sure everything's clean, and uh, you know, make sure there's nothing on any of the mating surfaces. And you're going to add a few drops of assembly lube, and you're not going to need a whole lot. You just need a, a film in there. Um, Basically, if you, you know, put a lot of lubricant on there, it's just going to squeeze it out anyway. So, um, you just need a, a nice light coat around there. And that's just to protect it from, you know, uh, when you spin it around or anything like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the cap on the bottom of the piston. And uh, I'll also mention on the LS engines, these uh, rod caps are, are what's called cracked. Uh, they're not machine service on the stock rods, and so you have to make sure that the seam lines up on the sides. You'll, it's very obvious. If it's backwards, it will not seat properly, so um, make sure it's facing the right direction. Go ahead and snug the bearing cap down. And uh, that's, that's good. And then I'll show you guys. Um, I hope there's enough light here. But you can see how I just screwed this cap on. And you want to make sure nothing's bound up. So basically when you put this thing together, you should be able to move it side to side. And I've already checked all the clearances and everything. This one's right at 15 thousandths, which is what you want on an LS engine. So, um, like I said, if, it, if something's bound up, you're not going to be able to, to move it like that. And I know it's not torqued down yet, but it is. It is tight, it's fully seated. And so if you can if you can move it side to side, um, you should be in good shape. So anyway, I hope that answers all your questions.